Okay, in this video, we're going to talk about setting up the proportions for your character. Now, before we do anything in this video, keep in mind that what you produce as a part of this process will look very rough. You're not trying to get anything finalized. You're just trying to get a feel for things like, uh, you know, how big is the head going to be very roughly? How long are the arms going to be? How long are the legs going to be? Now, if you are basing your character off of a real human being, then I highly recommend you take a quick time out and you uh, look at photographic works, uh, you study some anatomy, get some, uh, some hardcore proportions down on paper uh, based on the real world. Now, what I'm producing is a very cartoony character, so there will be some exaggerated elements, but I want to talk about that specifically because I've seen a lot of beginners who jump in, and what they make is an object, a character, uh, in a lot of cases, that just doesn't look right. Uh, you know, it ends up looking uh, horribly disfigured or malformed in some way, and they fall back on the excuse of, oh, well, it's cartoony, so it's okay that it looks awful. And it's not okay that it looks awful. That means you broke something. If you're going to exaggerate some part of the body, uh, then there needs to be a reason behind it. Uh, every single exaggerated character you've ever seen in any animated feature uh, that exaggeration takes place for a reason. You know, sometimes if a character is moving really quick, you'll see the legs kind of start to stretch out. Uh, it, that's, you know, that's for animation purposes. It's not something maybe we'd be uh, interested in as far as concept art goes, unless we're doing an exaggerated pose. But uh, other things, like uh, I'm, one of my favorite examples, and again, this might be something I've already brought up before, but look at Mr. Incredible from Pixar's The Incredibles. I mean, he's got this huge barrel chest and a little bit of a tummy, and he's got these big, huge arms, like gorilla arms, but he's these little tiny legs. And it, the big you know, reason behind that is you can see, just by glancing at him, that he is just loaded with upper body strength. As soon as you look at him, he just exudes this, he-man, I can pick up a car and throw it at you. But his legs, which you know, are generally, you know, what do you use your legs for, for, for speed and things like that, they're not, uh, they're not predominant on the character. And then you look at uh, Mrs. Incredible, and you know, she's very long of leg, and you know, her arms are also very long and slender, and you already get an idea that you know, she's a bit more of a runner, and then that whole kind of stretchiness is already kind of implied in her design. So keep things like that in mind while you're deciding upon your proportion. Okay, now, enough talk. Let's jump right in. I will start off by creating a new document, and I want my sheet of paper that I'm working on to be taller than it is wide. So the uh, dimensions that I initially came up with were 1280 by, uh, actually, that's the other way around. It was 1024, excuse me, by 1280. Now, you can go with this uh, if, you, if you want to, like for an initial work. I quickly found out that I just wanted more pixels. I wanted my image to look sharper than that. So let's take this and double it uh, to 2048. And this will be, what is it, 2560, I think. And we'll click OK. And there's our sheet. Now, uh, right now, I'm recording at 1024 by 768 resolution. So uh, to see the piece of paper this size, you'll notice that I've got to be zoomed just incredibly far out, which is not really a problem, just something to keep in mind. Now, background colors, it doesn't matter. If you want to work on a white sheet of paper, that's fine. If you want to work on uh, any other color, just go ahead and set your background color now. But... First thing I want you to do is to drop down a layer. Do all of your work on a layer. Please don't ever, ever, ever uh, actually draw anything on the background. There's a lot of reasons for this. If you need to reposition or resize something that you've drawn, which we very well uh, will likely need to do, it, you can really mess things up if, you, uh, ha if you're doing things on your background. So think of your background as uh, something that is literally in the background. It is immovable. You're never going to touch it. What you want to draw on are various uh, sheets of transparency, various layers on top of this. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do, just to make everything nice and organized. This very first layer is just a notes layer. And uh, if you don't want to do this on your computer, of course, you could do this with a sheet of paper. Generally, when I'm doing this for the quote-unquote real world, I'll have a sheet of paper with all my notes on it. But because I want you to see my notes, uh, we'll add a layer for these. Now, what are some of the things that are important for my goblin character? These are uh, you know, various answers to questions that came out when we were designing the character, like the 20-question process. What did we decide on? Well, we knew that he's uh, not very strong. He's small... Uh, he is not very intimidating, and yeah, I'm actually going to try to write out. I already misspelled it. Isn't that terrible? It's when you're talking and writing at the same time. So not very intimidating. I want him to be kind of fat, uh, so I am have kind of a paunch, uh, like a pot belly. 
So that's going to be, you know, a major thing. That's something that I want to be very uh, kind of dominant about him. I want you to look at him and go like, oh, wow, he's, he's absolutely harmless because, you know, he's this kind of fat, weak-looking critter. But I still want him to, uh, you know, look like he, he moves around in a, an outdoor environment. So while I want him to be fat, I want there to look like there is some sort of muscle structure underneath. So... So muscles equals some. We'll, we'll keep this very general. So he's got you know a little bit of musculature about him, but nothing very heavy. Enough where you can see that you know if he needs to, he could scamper up a tree or you know run away from you for a, you know a short distance before he had to put his hands on his knees and pant for a while. He can still hunt for his food, but overall he's a you know kind of a, a well-fed pot-bellied goblin. That's that's what we're going for. Jot down as many of these notes as you can, really. Uh, anything that you can write down is going to help you. Now, I'm not going to write down absolutely everything I could because we could spend a really good chunk of this video writing stuff instead of drawing, and I'd rather uh, get down to the process. But uh, some other things that I think are going to be really important for our character is long arms. Uh, I'll, I'll just turn that into an M. Okay, that's, that's, just, that's awful. All right, so long arms. Now, why do I want long arms? Well... I'm thinking that he should be kind of long of torso, kind of shorter legs. I don't want his legs to be extremely dominant. He's not much of a runner. Uh, he's not the kind of thing that's you know going to leap away from you like Spider-Man or anything like that. And he's kind of dopey looking. And the long arms will also uh, come in very handy for expression. If he starts talking with his hands and flailing his, uh, his arms and his hands around, having those longer arms will really make that look exaggerated. So uh, that's, you know, I have that in mind. Uh, the and as the kind of converse of that, he's going to have kind of short legs. So this is going to give him almost a uh, a monkey or a gorilla like stature, where you got the the little tiny legs with the overly long arms, so he can you know, reach out and grab things. Now, when you're jotting down these notes, know going in that everything you write down might change at some point. Uh, you might think that everything you've uh, created here as far as your list of important stuff is great, and that's, ex you know, that's the final idea, and then you might draw it and go, you know, that's not really working the way I thought it would. Uh, just a side note, and this is about drawing in general, not even necessarily about this stage, but about everything you do concerning drawing. Don't ever, ever, ever get attached to anything you've drawn. Uh, every single line that you make might need to be destroyed at some point. And I know a lot of people who, when they first get into drawing, they're way too demanding of themselves. They uh, think to themselves, you know, every single pencil stroke that I make needs to be a work of art. And that, you know, my, uh, my drawing needs to look finalized and beautiful the whole time I'm working. And that's never going to be the case. And that will throw off a lot of people who are getting into drawing because they get very early on in the process. And they think, oh, this is just not looking the way I want it to. They'll crumple up their paper, throw it over their shoulder, get frustrated, and then go watch TV for a while. Because they're just not getting the result they want very quickly. Drawing is not an instant gratification process. While you're working, especially in these initial early stages, your work is going to look bad. It's going to look very, uh, very rough, very sketchy. But that's what you want. You're, uh, you're building a rough, sketchy framework upon which you're going to build a nice drawing. Now, why am I telling you that? Uh, as you are working, you may, especially if you're a complete beginner, you may come up with some pencil strokes or a little sketch or part of your, uh, your character that you're really proud of. You know, like, you know, this little arm that I've drawn is the best arm ever. I'm never going to be able to create an arm that good again. And because of that, you will go out of your way not to erase whatever that feature is because you've done such a good job on it. That's a bad mentality to fall into because later on you might find out that while you did draw or render out that particular aspect of the character or object in a really fantastic sort of way, it's not working and you're going to have to erase it. So keep that mentality in mind. These decisions that you're making, even on your notes, may not be finalized. No single pencil stroke that you add down to your sheet of paper or in Photoshop, whatever, should ever be considered the final until you're completely done. And even then, you might get feedback. And somebody's like, you know, his arms are a little too long. You need to shorten those up. And you might wince because, you know, you spent so long working on this drawing. But that's where you become a professional artist, where you just nod and get back to the task at hand. And you will find, if you stick to it, if you keep practicing uh, even just the techniques that I show you, you will get faster and faster at production. And the faster you become, the more comfortable you become, the less likely you're going to be to... Uh, to get upset when that sort of thing happens. Okay. Now, seriously, no, enough of the yammering on that. So we've got a few notes. Uh, we know kind of generally the sort of proportions we're looking for. Let's go ahead and hide our notes layer for now, though I'll probably, I could probably delete it. We'll probably never need it again. And let's create our initial layer. And I'm going to call this layer proportion. Uh, now, no going in. This layer will probably have nothing at all to do with our final drawing except figuring out the sizes that certain things will be. Now, 
keeping that in mind, I don't want you to think that uh, anything you do on this layer needs to look very good. In fact, the rougher it looks, uh, the better it's going to be because the faster you can create it. So just, just be sketchy and quick. Now, I have chosen a pale blue color. This is a throwback to when I was first learning drawing, and for some reason I got attached to working with blue pencils. Uh, you can work with whatever color you want. I... I would recommend to you, uh, if you're doing this inside of Photoshop, that you grab a lighter color. Don't go with true black, uh, because it will help you uh, draw very lightly. Another trick that uh, I also like to use, and you know, again, this is all preference. You don't really have to do it. You can go with black, but pull back on your opacity so that as you're drawing, you can layer strokes on top of one another. And the more strokes you get, you start to drive that toward black, and then it starts to work like a real pencil. So keep that kind of thing in mind. I mean, and that might be fairly obvious to some of you, but I do run into people from time to time that are like, oh, I never thought of doing that before. So, uh, you know, just uh, food for thought. Now I'm going to switch back over to blue, and I'll go with a darker blue this time, uh, though a little less saturated, and then we'll just use the opacity trick to uh, get varying levels of... Uh, of shaded and light and dark colors. So, uh, for proportions, all we're doing here is we're determining the size of various parts of the body. We're not worried about poses. So, let's just start off by drawing a stick figure. Uh, we'll start off with a spine, and I'm going to draw this as if it's facing us dead on. So, a spine, notice it's very rough. I, I don't want to draw anything that, as soon as I make a brush stroke, I don't want anybody on the video to go like, oh, that's the best spine ever. This should look really, really rough at this point. Now, a lot of people when they're drawing stick figures, uh, they'll do something like this. And because I'm going to erase it at some point, I'm going to create a separate layer. I've seen people draw stick figures like this. This is your quintessential stick figure. You know, That's not really the kind of stick figure you're going with. That is not a structure that we can really build off of. Uh, your shoulders don't start from the same position. Uh, your hips are in two separate positions. They don't start right in the middle. So you don't want to start a stick figure like that. Now, let's go ahead and throw that layer away. And keeping that in mind... What we can do is create a line and a line out uh, going to our shoulders. And your shoulders kind of drop. Take a look at your, the orientation of your collarbones. Uh, they kind of swoop out and start to point down a little bit. So we can make a couple of lines that swoop out. Don't worry too much about the width of them. Just point them down slightly and then draw a little circle for your shoulder joint and call it even. For your head, eh, draw some sort of circular object. Uh, if, if it's too high up, don't worry about it. I wouldn't even worry about a neck at this point. Unless, like some in your notes maybe, uh, if you're building you know, some big oafish football player linebacker, and you know, usually their, uh, their trap muscles go all the way back up into the back of their heads, and they look like they have no neck whatsoever. In which case, you know, that might be an important aspect of your character, so you might want to start drawing some lines that would really kind of illustrate that big wide neck. But since we're not doing that, I'm not going to worry about a neck right now. Uh, we'll do the same thing we did for the hips as we did with the shoulders. So... We'll draw a couple of lines kind of branching out. We'll draw a little circle for the hips. And now let's uh, do some proportional lines for the length of our arms and legs. So uh, we'll say that our arm goes down to about here, and this arm goes down to about here. And somewhere along the way, uh, I, I usually go about halfway plus a little bit upwards. We'll draw an elbow. And then at the bottom of this, we'll draw just a little diamond-like shape for a hand. Now let's do some legs. So we'll draw these in. Now these are you know, kind of long legs. You notice the proportions of this are completely out of whack. These aren't really uh, human proportions at all, but they don't have to be at this stage of the game. And just as a reminder, and I'm sure that uh, I've already said this already, if you want to use true human proportions and you want to bring in a photo of, a, uh, of an actual human being and use that as a basis for proportion, that's totally great and called for and a good way to work. I'm not saying that that's bad at all. But uh, if you want to work this way, a cool little thing that I like to do when I'm deciding on proportions is just come up with a very basic stick figure shape like this and then use tricks and tools that uh, Photoshop has on hand to make the most of it. Now, if you don't have Photoshop, if you're doing this on like a piece of uh, tracing paper, every change that I make will just simply require that you lay down a new sheet of paper and draw out a really quick stick figure. But if you think about it, you can draw this stick figure very quickly. So if you think, oh, the, the arms need to be uh, shorter, but I like the rest of the body, cool, throw down another quick sheet of paper, draw out the body, the legs real quick, and then draw it with shorter uh, arms or legs. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get out my lasso tool and let's say that, you know, maybe my shoulders are a little bit wide set. They're, they're kind of going out a little bit far. All right, well, we'll just draw a quick lasso around this first arm, and I'll hit Control-T. And because I don't want anything to overlap right now, we can rotate it a little bit, and then we'll move it inwards a bit. Yeah, it makes the, the strokes kind of overlap a little bit. Don't worry about it. 
Uh, this is all very rough and just a way for you to get general shape and size. When you're done, press enter. We've still got the lasso tool out, so let's grab the other arm. And we'll do the same thing. We'll hit control T, we'll move it in just a little bit, and then just for sake of ease, we'll rotate it out just a tad. Now, I kind of like the, the long arms, but I think maybe the legs are, are already a little bit longer than what I had in mind, and the hips are already maybe a, a little bit wide set. So let's uh, just keep on doing what we're doing. We'll just draw a quick lasso around. Now, we can hold down Control if we want to move very quickly, and then hit Control t and I'll, I'll just hold down Shift, and we'll shrink this down a little bit. No, not too much. Maybe something like right about there. Press Enter, and now just do the same thing and make the other uh, leg line up as well. So we'll pull in the hip, control T, hold on shift, scale that down a little bit as well. I'm not really convinced as to whether or not the spine is too long yet. Maybe we should get in a few more shapes, but uh, it does kind of look like maybe the head is a, a maybe a little small for what I have in mind. Maybe it's floating a little too high in the air. So just keep on working. You know, grab your head, uh, hold down control. You can drag this down. You can hit control T, size this up. If you hold down alt and shift, then you can scale up from the center, which can be kind of useful. I mean, that's a little big. So just find some happy medium that you're satisfied with. Press enter, and there you go. So you're starting to get, you know, better skeletal structure for the proportions that you have in mind. Now, just looking at it again, I might take my arms and make them a little bit shorter. So real quick, control T, and we'll just shift drag this in. And you'll notice because of the positioning of my, uh, my lasso, how I ended it right up here near the shoulder, I can pretty much just scale in, and it shrinks down really well. So let's make that just a tiny bit shorter, and we'll press enter and grab the lasso again. Control T, and we'll just shrink this down a little bit too. So there you go. You're, you're already getting kind of a really rough general idea of how long your limbs are going to be. Now, there's other uh, aspects to consider too with proportion. It's not all about the length of limb. Now, in our case, we know that we want a pot-bellied critter. We know he's got to have kind of a big tummy, so that's a consideration for us. So let's go back to drawing. Let's uh, hit B to get our brush tool out. And let's start creating a belly. Now, it might be a good idea if uh, this is if you don't want to disrupt your skeletal structure with features like this, just drop down a new layer. So uh, let's maybe draw a circular shape for our belly, and let's see. Now, I'm not seeing anything. It's probably because I've done something silly here. Oh, do I have something selected? Yeah, I did. Hit Control D every now and then. If you ever draw and you don't see any uh, any lines coming up, it's possible that you have something selected. Hit Control D and then try to draw again. So uh, let's say our belly kind of goes out over our hips, but we're we're going for that pot belly look. We don't necessarily want him to be you know hideously obese where it's just you know just flesh everywhere. Like if he, he couldn't fit into a a phone booth without well, never mind. We won't get into all that. So we'll uh, leave his shoulders still kind of thin, and his shoulders might already still be a little bit wide set. But we'll have this, this big kind of predominant belly, which we can kind of already flow up into the shoulders and get an idea of what the torso itself is going to look like. And then we can pull that up into a neck shape. And this is just creating very basic shapes that will represent what more, uh, what some more of our proportions are going to look like. Uh, other features more than just uh, length of various limbs. And I, I like where this is going already. I like the shape that we've got going on here. Not really sure about size of head, but I, I think that's going to be, I think that's enough to work with for now. Now, this is, uh, again, we're just trying to come up with uh, size and, and position. Things. This isn't even our pose yet. We're going to be creating our pose based on the proportions we create here. So um, I can't really think of anything else I want to change here. I think, in general, I'm okay with this. I'm not sure about these legs. Let me uh, grab the legs. We'll get the lasso tool out again. And I'll grab them both this time. And let's just shorten them up from the bottom. Now, I like that a lot better. That, just making those legs that much shorter really makes that belly kind of stand out. Like, he's really got a paunch. He's not really here to run a marathon at all. He's here to kind of waddle around and look funny. Now... In doing that, it looks like his, ar his uh, arms might be even longer than I want them to be. I don't necessarily want them to go down past his knees, and if they rotated down and he straightened them out, it looks like he could probably make them go down that far, and that's not really what I'm looking for. So let's go back and maybe shorten his arms up just a little more, and you'll notice that this workflow that I'm using has a lot of back and forth. I mean, don't ever uh, decide on any one thing until you, you've really been working with it for a while. So we'll shrink that in. And I think we're starting to get a nice proportion in place. I think it's starting to make sense. We've still got overly long arms with short legs. We've still got our, our big paunchy belly kind of accounted for. 
and I think we're really starting to kind of follow uh, the notes that we've taken. Now, if you're creating a different kind of character, maybe you've got some athletic uh, kind of muscular but trim character. You know, you're going to be creating your proportions in an entirely different way based on what's important to you. Uh, maybe if this character is built to run a lot, maybe those legs are going to be kind of long and toned and lean. So you're going to take that into account and make those legs nice and long. This, the uh, torso is going to be very slender. Uh, now, you take a look at Spider-Man as an example. If you uh, look at some of the really exaggerated poses of Spider-Man, you'll notice that his legs are very, very long and his torso is very small. But why? To kind of give you an emphasis on you know, those really you know, outlandish poses he'll get into where he's, he's flinging a web and his leg is up over his head. They give him that kind of monkey-like look by really stretching things out. So take stuff like that into account when you're coming up with these proportions. But I think even from here, we've got something that I like. So what I'm going to do is take layer one and hit uh, control E and crush that down into the proportion layer. And I think we've got something to work with. So we're done as far as this step goes. You might want to work a little bit further. If you're unsure, if, if you're like, well, you know, I've got a, a structure here, but I don't yet know if it's going to work, that's fine. That's a completely valid way to think about it. You may not know whether or not something is going to work until you've gone a lot further into the process of actually creating your character. So just as a, as a, a reiterator, keep in mind that every single pencil stroke you create may not actually work. It can't really be caught, thought of as the final until you get done and you've received a bunch of feedback and you, know, you decide finally, once and for all, whether or not something's working or if it's not. So if you're unsure, get something that you think is going to work, that you've got a pretty good feeling about, and move on from there. And you'll find out if it's working as you progress. So that is going to wrap things up for this video where all we've really done is just created a very basic proportional structure. And from here, we're going to come up with our pose.